Howdy folks and welcome back to my World of Tanks replays with the mighty jingles. Uh, we're still on the test server and uh, this is new. This is the post-battle results screen. It's no longer uh, visible in the game. Now what happens is the game ends and you get a message across the screen that this is victory, defeat, draw, battle time expired, whatever, and you get dumped straight back in the garage and this screen is waiting for you. So let's take a look. And this is really, really good. This is everything everybody was asking for and more. The amount of information available is phenomenal. So first things first, defeat all Allied vehicles destroyed. Uh, you're going to see this game later. It had the most lame ending <laughs> you can possibly imagine. Uh, but yeah, we'll see that one later. Um, I was in my Object 263. Uh, I earned 46,152 credits and 745 experience for a loss. Now down here gives you your credit and experience summary with and without premium. So if you're not running a premium account, obviously this would be highlighted, that would be greyed out. But you'd be able to see what the benefit of having a premium account would be, uh, how much more you would earn. Over here we have the basic battle efficiency report. Uh, now this is really, really good. Here you can see all of these guys were greyed out, they died. Uh, this bat chat was the only survivor. But look at the icons. Um, now none of these are lit up. I don't know what these mean. You don't get a mouse over when you mouse over them. There's no tooltip pops up. So you can only get actually get a tooltip so far for the ones that are illuminated. So we can see that the, the lone surviving tank on the battlefield was this bat chat. And I hit him twice. Little number two there. And the mouse over tells me I did 1021 damage to this bat chat. This one tells me I critted him once. So you can see these are the ones that you killed, so I killed the AMX 50B, the T62A, an Object 263, and an AMX 50 Fosh 155. Any others? No, four kills. But I damaged all of these. So what you see here, this battle efficiency window, shows you all of the tanks that you killed, damaged, critted, and I'm assuming these look like little binoculars. So I'm going to go out on a, on a, on a I'm going to go out on a wing here and say this indicates tanks that you detected and I'm pretty sure this one indicates tanks that you detected which were subsequently damaged by friendly players for the whole scouting report thing and we're going to see more of that later. So that's the immediate summary screen with uh, the, the summary of the, of the battle and your personal damage efficiency report. Then we move on to the team score. Uh, and this is all sortable by various different tabs, so sort by platoons, sort by player name, sort by tank name. Don't know what this is. Um, it's a little shield icon. Um, haven't got a clue what this means. Whatever it is, uh, I was ragged second on it with 65%. This T62A, 100%. Don't know what that means. You can sort by kills, so we see that uh, myself and the AMX 50B got four kills each, which is pretty good. You can sort it by efficiency. Um, not efficiency, sorry. Experience earned. So you can see I earned the most experience on our team. Um, uh, and sort it by battle awards. And the only battle award on our team was the sniper for the AMX 50B. And you can do the same for the enemy team. You can see you know, all of these different stats for the enemy team. Again, uh, this batch out artillery here, 100%. I, I have no idea what that means. So if anybody has any clue what this little shield icon is, please let me know. Um, I'm sure my viewers would be very happy to, uh, to know what that means as well. But yeah, there, there you go. Basic team score, enemy team score. But the DL report is very interesting. Um, I mean, there's lots of information here, but there's, there's one thing on here in particular that the scouts have been asking for for a long time. So you've got shots fired, of which were direct hits, Damage caused by high explosive shells, penetrating hits. Okay, total damage caused so six thousand damage in that battle. That's pretty good. Took four hits. Damage caused to allies, enemies detected damage and destroyed. So damaged eight enemy tanks, destroyed four. And here's here it is. There's the scout report. Damage caused by allies upon my lighting. So the number that you're going to see there is the number of tanks. Uh, well, actually no, it's going to be a, a number of damage caused to all the enemy tanks that you scouted, and kept illuminated while your friends were, were shooting at them. Uh, so, uh, so you're going to see exactly where all the scouting experience comes from. It's going to be that this, this one here. Uh, base capture points, base defense points, and how far you traveled in the game. <laughs> that's, an, that's a new one. Uh, credit report breakdown. 
total number of credits received. Now, this column here is without premium. This column here is with premium, so 46,000 credits, and this is useful. Repairs, ammunition, resupply costs, and the, uh, the total. So that, minus that, and that, minus any fines, uh, minus any res res uh, consumable resupplies, it tells you whether or not you broke even. You can see in this game, on a loss, still made 6,300 credits. So 46,000 credits with this tier 10 tank destroyer. Uh, with, with the rate of fire of the thing, <laughs> um, yeah, even with a premium account, well, well, you can see straight away, with a premium account, 6,300 credit. If I didn't have a premium account in a pretty good game, on the object 263, I would have made a 9,000 credit loss. So that's interesting. And then starting time of the game, how long it lasted, how long you lasted. So I almost made it to the end. Um, nine, ten, just a minute away from the end. Uh, I was basically the second last one to die. And then their bat chat went and killed our artillery. And that was it, game over. And the experience breakdown again. Uh, total received, minus any fine for causing damage to allies. Uh, and the subtitle. But here's the other interesting thing. Uh, right down at the bottom of the page here, uh, it's available on all three of the report screens. Next vehicle with two times XP. And you can jump straight to, obviously uh, this is the, the first game I've played today, uh, was on this Object 263. But I look and there is the list of every tank I have in the garage, which still has the daily double XP game, which is all of them. And uh, you can just pick the tank and go straight into battle from it on it from here so that is the new post results battle screen which is nice now um, what I wanted to do today was look at the Russian tank destroyers specifically the object 263 it's the new tier 10 tank destroyer there it is um, this is an interesting machine it's a it's a very very interesting machine um, Let's look at the stats and then we'll talk about how it performs. So, 1900 hit points. Uh, compare that to the object 268, 1950. Um, I don't think I have any of the tier 10 tank destroyers. Not even here on the test server. Yeah, let's have a look. No, I didn't buy any. But uh, around 2000 seems to be average for the tier 10 TDs. Um, most of them don't go that far over 2000. I think, in fact, I think the only one with over 2000 is the Agpanzer E100. But, you know, it's, it's massive. You'd expect that. Decent amount of hit points. Um, it's a 60 ton machine. Compare this to the Object 268, which is basically what most people are going to be levelling the comparisons at. Um, the Object 268 is lighter. But here's the thing the Object 268 has an 800 horsepower engine and can do 48 kilometres per hour. The Object 263 has a 1050 horsepower engine and can do 55 kilometres per hour. And I have to tell you, the acceleration is pretty damn good as well. Um, also, the traverse isn't bad, 32 degrees per second. It does turn a lot faster than you'd expect. Faster than the Object 268. So, <laughs> it, it's, it weighs more, but it's faster and it turns better than the 268. And look at the armour. Now, the armour on the 268, 120 at the front, 60 at the side, 50 at the rear. Uh, but the frontal armour is kind of well sloped and, and it, it, you know, it can be quite bouncy from the front. The 263 has 250 millimetres of armour at the front. And just just take a look at these armour plates here for a minute. Look at that. That solid wedge of armour bolted to the front of the thing. And it's the same here. You can see where the colouring is different. That thing, that, that big strip at the front there is pure armour. Look at the thickness of the gun mantle. That is monstrously well armoured. And not only is it thick... But look at the sloping on it. 60 degree slope at least. So I, I shudder to think of what the effective thickness of that thing is. Um, I do know that point blank range shots at this thing, even aiming for these little hatches here, which I didn't notice to be appreciable weak spots uh, when my sights hovered over them, with the T110E5's big gun, couldn't get through this armour plate. Um, and if it couldn't get through that one, it's not going to be able to get through that one, because that's sloped even more. And pretty much the only place you can penetrate this thing from the front is that tiny little hole over there. 
and the lower glaciers, which is not the biggest target in the world. So from the front, this thing is just ridiculously hard to kill. But it's not all fantastic news, because the sides are only 100 millimeters thick. And while you do have a bit of sloping going on here, it's a smaller target and harder to hit, shoot at this. In fact, shoot at this. And the reason why you want to shoot at that is, well, a number of reasons. One, it's 100 millimeters thick. It's a big flat side. Two, look inside. It's a massive ammo rack. Uh, and the same on the other side. Both the sides at the rear of this vehicle are just covered in ammunition. Um, and shots to the side of this thing will A, penetrate, and B, damage the ammo rack. It, it happens nearly every time. Um, armour from the rear, 60 millimetres. Uh, you know, <laughs> get round the back of a tank store, he's dead meat. Yeah, that's the same in this case, as you'd expect it to. Um, but look at the view range, 420 metres. It's got the same view range as the Pattern 3. And of course, Tier 10 vehicle, 720 metre signal range as well. Uh, now, let's have a look at the gun. The gun is very, very interesting. It has a rate of fire of six rounds per minute, which is pretty good. It has 290 penetration, which is amazing. Now the damage, the alpha damage is kind of low, low-ish, 550. We're talking Jag Tiger Tier 9 standards. But it's 0 0.32 accuracy. That is absurdly accurate. And the aiming time is, well, 2.3 isn't good, but it's 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 average for these big guns anyway. Um, it, in fact, it's on the faster side uh, of, of, of big Tier 10 gun aiming time. So what we actually got here is... A tier 10 Yag Tiger, except it has all the benefits of the Yag Tiger, with none of the drawbacks of the Yag Tiger. Uh, it doesn't have a massive lower glacis to shoot at. It has 250 millimeters of armor, sloped armor, not just on the frontal upper casement, but also at the front of the hull. It has a very, very accurate, rapid firing gun that does a moderate amount of damage. It's a tier 10 Yag Tiger. <laughs> um, and it's direct competitor, the Object 268. Well, let's just compare the guns. There's the 268's gun. Here's the Object 263's gun. Um, the Object 268 had... It certainly had the highest damage per minute of any of the tier 10 tank destroyers. Well, that's no longer the case this baby does here, this 130mm S70A. Uh, it fires almost twice as quickly. It has appreciable penetration. The Object 268 has 303, this has 290, so the Object still... Uh, not the Object, yeah, the, the 268 still has better penetration, but not by much. Uh, the damage is, is, is where the Object 268 has it beat, uh, flat out. 850 damage. Your, your standard damage for a Tier 10 tank destroyer gun. The 263 does 550. That's sort of Yag Tiger Tier 9 standards of damage. It's less than an ISU-152 with the BL-10 gun. It's even more accurate than the Object 268, and it has a faster aiming time. Hmm. What that means in practice is that the Object 268 has 3,000 average damage per minute, which is a phenomenal amount of DPM. But the Object 263 has 3,300 damage per minute, is more accurate, and fires faster. It's also got a faster top speed, a much faster top speed. It turns quicker, and it has better armour. So, what's the point of the Object 268? It doesn't even appear to be that much smaller a target. So, yeah. The only the only thing the Object 268 really has over the 263 is bigger alpha damage. Um, is that enough? I, I, I really don't know. Um, I like this thing. Uh, I've had some great games in it. I've had some derpy games in it, but um, it's quick. 
It's not without its disadvantages, though. I mean, it is an absolute nightmare to try and put holes in this thing from the front. If you cannot hit this lower glacis, good luck. Just good luck. Your, your best bet is just to back off and find a way to get around him. Um, because he will he will get at least two shots into you as you're approaching him. Uh, and that's going to do a thousand damage. And he's unlikely to be alone. Um... But as I said, it's not without its disadvantage. The sides are only 100 millimeters thick, which is still better than the Object 268, which is only 60 millimeters thick. Um, and the sides are lined with ammo racks. Hits on the gun on this thing tend to knock it out every time. Um, hits on the side tend to ammo rack it, which doesn't do a thing for the loading time of that gun. Um, and it is an open-topped vehicle, and this is probably its single biggest drawback. It's an open-topped vehicle. Artillery is going to absolutely destroy this thing. And even if you don't have artillery, tanks like the E100 with its 150mm gun firing a high-explosive shell at this really mess you up. I mean, they seriously mess you up. Open-top vehicles do not like being shot at with high explosive shells. Um, E100s are going to be a problem for this thing if the driver has a stock of HE ready to shoot at you. Um, so E100 drivers, make sure you have a stock of high explosives. This thing hates being shot at by HE. And of course the E100's 150 mm, uh, 150 mm gun has a 3.5 meter splash damage radius so you don't even need to hit the thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like this machine. I think it might be a bit too overpowered. I haven't found... I, I can't find a single weak spot in the front of this armour plate. Um, there's a weak spot up there on the front, but look at the size of that. Good luck hitting that thing. Um, you'd imagine these hatches here would be weak spots, and maybe they are, but I couldn't detect... I mean, I was I was 30 metres 30 meter away from one of these things, shooting out from the front in an object t uh, in a... T110 E5 and pointing the T110 E5's gun at these little hatches I was still getting a, an orange penetration marker so ah, they look like they should be weak spots maybe they are supposed to be weak spots but I don't think they are weak spots at the moment so from the front good luck just good luck <laughs> sides no problem rear no problem from above arty will wreck this thing and it doesn't like being shot at with HE and the sides are pure ammo rack so it's not without its weaknesses, but I can live with weaknesses like that for a machine that pushes out 3,300 damage per minute with 0.32 accuracy. It's basically a tier 10 Jag Tiger without the Jag Tiger's drawbacks. So, um, equipment. Well, <laughs> you've got to put a gun lane drive on. 2.3 second aim of time isn't bad, but you want it to be better. Uh, you've got to put a large caliber tank gun rammer on it. Uh, and for your third option, well, yeah. I put a camo net on because it's a, t it's a tank destroyer uh, and it's quite a low profile sneaky tank destroyer as well um, you couldn't really go wrong with binocular telescope or coloured optics either uh, it, it has a fantastic view range but obviously the view range that you have is affected by the camo rating of whatever you're trying to spot so the more your effective view range the, the, the less the effective camo if you like of the guy that you're trying to spot so more view range is never a bad thing um but I think a wet ammo rack might be a very, very good idea on this thing. Because getting shot from the side, you tend to get ammo racked a lot. So a wet ammo rack might be a fantastically good idea on this machine. I haven't played enough games to to know uh, yet whether or not that's going to be essential. Uh, I suspect it probably will be. So rather than a camo net, you might actually find getting a wet ammo rack is a better idea. And crew skills, camo, 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 camo. Commander, camo reaches 100%, swap it, give him six cents. Job done. There you go. So, let's have a look at a couple of games. So, this is what the new Malinovka encounter map looks like. I mean, obviously the map looks the same, it's still Malinovka, but if you have a look at the map, there you go. There are your objectives. Gentlemen, start your engines. And I'm always amazed at how fast this thing is for such a big tank destroyer. It certainly doesn't have any problems whatsoever whipping around the map. What 
is that? Oh, it's these two guys. Oh. <laughs> the tier 10 heavies are forming a conga line. Okay, well. As long as you're having fun, fellas, that's the important thing. Right, anyway, where's the fight? So that's the cap down there on the edge of the open field. So I figure if I sit up here for long enough, I should have somebody to shoot at. They're still derping around down there. I can hear them clanging up against each other. Looks to be a couple of mediums making a push for the hill. Oh, there we go. Somebody's in the base capture circle. There he is, T-62. Oh, crap. Missed. But this thing reloads fast enough. Oh, is that his ass? Oh, where's he gone? All right. Wait for somebody to spot him. There's enough tanks lined up there. There he is. Oh no, T110E5. Okay. And... Gotcha. Next! Oh, hello. What's going on back there? Okay, I need to keep an eye on the map. Looks like I'm being outflanked. Where there's one, there's almost certainly going to be another. Now those two guys sitting up there in the deployment zone might be AFK, so I could have serious problems developing behind me. And it looks like everybody's T-62s are committing suicide. So I'm going to ignore that tank destroyer down by the cap for the moment and go and deal with this T-62A, because, yeah, he's killing AFKers. Gun depression isn't very good in this thing. A low average damage roll. And aim. I'll probably hit his engine. With a bit of luck. And he's still not even shooting at us, he's just going for the AFKers. Oh, turret shot. Yeah. Turned as I fired, that one bounced. Alright, now he's displaying a little bit of brains here. He's keeping that AMX 50 Fosh between me and him, but he's still shooting at it instead of me. And am I really trying to <laughs> dogfight with the T-62A? Well, that one did no damage. Looks like he just totally missed. And there you go. The sides of this thing are made out of ammo racks. You can use a bit of help here, team. Hello, team. That one bounced. Oh, now I've got you. Yeah. You just weren't very good, mate. Right, let's get back on with winning the game. So, back down to the capture point. See if we can deal with that tank destroyer down there, whatever it is. Oh, 263. That's a bit of a dodgy angle, but we'll see what we can do. And that has probably damaged his ammo rack. You can even see the hole from here, right in the side. Although it seems a bit far forward. Ah, that one missed. Dodgy angle, have to aim for the side. That one missed. Oh, big juicy target there, two shots to kill him. Enemy is hit. Zero damage penetrating hit in the side of an AMX 50B. Oh, fantastic. Finally, okay, good hit. Not enough to kill him, but good enough. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you give me that flank. Give me that flank. Penetration. And we blew his tracks off. Come on, show me a bit of green. Aim back a little, I think. Unless somebody kills him before we get him. Oh no. Killing blow. Still anybody's game. Ah, lovely. Exposed targets, that's what we want to see. 
good hit on that Fox 155. I don't know what he's doing charging across an open field with three shots in his gun at the most. Uh, another zero damage penetrating hit. Uh, doesn't even look like we've tracked him, but... Okay, that one just blew his tracks off. Come on, guys, kill him, will you? There we go. Can we ninja the killing blow? No. Okay, next. Guys are further forward than us. The fellas over there are running into some sort of contact. There's two tank destroyers up by the uh, enemy team deployment marker. Somebody's hitting them. Ah, AMX 50B. Okay. And this gun, it. Ooh, 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 kill, kill. Yes. Now this gun is surprisingly accurate. As you can see, right through the window. Can we do it twice? Mm, lost sight of him. Waste the shot. Yeah, that one looked like it hit the window frame. Uh, it's an interesting variation on the map. Encounter uh, here on Malinovka. Because they've stuck the cap circle right in no man's ground in the middle of that field. And that is just asking for trouble. So it kind of plays out like a standard battle on Malinovka, except that the deployment zones are different, they're up on the hill. There's only three of them left of the zone, and there's three of us. But the guys that we have alive have got more kills than the guys that they have alive, which hopefully means we're the better players. Although we're pretty beat up, but so are they. And there's that AMX-50. Come on. Come on. And another kill. And now there's just a bat chat and their artillery. However, there's just... Oh, that 50B's in trouble. Uh, do I have a shot? I do have a shot. No, he's in cover. And if the 50B's been spotted, their artillery is... not going to need to hit him more than once or twice. Come on. And I think I hit him there. Yep, I did. Looks like that one went right through. Another good hit. I mean, you never have problems penetrating French tanks with this gun. And now watch this. This you are not going to believe. Well, not this. Where is he? Come on. You get a 10 second warning when you go into deep water. That's okay, I can make it across here in time. And there you go, I'm out. We lost all of our men. Uh, what? Uh, how can my crew drown there? <laughs> Are you serious? Unbelievable. I'm not even in the water and my crew all died. <sighs> and that actually cost us the game. So that was fun. Actually, there's a couple of other features about the post-battle report screen that I just discovered by looking at the forums. Um, and here we go. Now, currently in-game, you can't see the post-battle reports unless you stay in the game until the end of the match. And I had thought that that was the same in patch 8, 
but it isn't. Now if you click on the notification window at the bottom here you can see, as usual, the results of all the games that you've played during the current logon session. However, you see the little crossed sword icon? Well now you can click on it and guess what happens? There you go. That's good stuff. Now I've pulled up this report window in particular because this was an absolutely awful game. Uh, we were on highway, uh, we started at the southern base, I headed north to defend artillery from flanking attacks and then artillery team killed me uh, because I wasn't Russian. And there it is. Ruskus RU, T92, and there, that's what a team killer looks like. But here's something else you can do. Now I've already submitted a report against this guy in the game, but watch this. You can complain about people after the battle. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And the number of complaints that you, submit, that you can submit is, has been increased to five. Uh, I've already used two today. Now you can't see the full list here um, after the battle, but if you were to control click on somebody's name during the game, uh, there are more options. Uh, sort of physics related. There's I can't remember what, they, what exactly what they were, but there's an there's an additional complaint that you can submit for uh, pushing. So if somebody pushes you over the edge of a cliff on your team, uh, you can submit a, a complaint for that. Notice also that the bot is now also idle, so that's how you submit complaints against team uh, team killers, against AFKers. Uh, and that's not all. Messing around on this screen, guess what else? Pick any team member, click on their name, and you get their results, which is nice. Um, so yeah, Oof. all sorts of useful information on the post-battle report screen. Uh, I didn't realise was there. I still haven't got a clue what this means. <laughs> uh, no doubt by the time you see this somebody will have explained on on the uh, comments as to exactly what that is. But yeah, I haven't got a clue. No idea whatsoever. Uh, so anyway, uh, what's next? So this was a replay I had with two subscribers on the uh, test server. AgriKid and Lovely Jubbly. Um, here we are on Mountain Pass you may have already seen from the uh, physics sneak peek video I put up. I can't remember if this map was one of the ones I did. But anyway, here it is. Very pretty map. They all are very, very pretty map. And I decide I'm going to... And that batch has just gone for flying lessons. <laughs> right off the bridge. Remember on the physics sneak peek, there was a bit of a bug with that bridge where you could actually stop dead as you tried to drive onto it. But they seem to fix that up. So I'm going to cover the bridge. doesn't seem to be a lot happening at the moment, so we're going to go over the bridge. Whoop, T29. Oh, poor sucker. Tier 7 heavy. Looks like that one went right through. What's he doing in this game? He must be platooned with somebody. And he bounces right off me, and that's going to happen every time. There is no way a T29 is going to be able to damage this thing. Not with that 105 mil gun. There he goes, bounces again. We finished him off. Poor sod being stuck in this game. I need to get over this bridge as quickly as I can because my sides are made out of ammo racks. Now, there we go. Oh, it's four bounces. I did take a hit in the side. The T62A, but did minimal damage. stage when nobody really knows how to play an object 263 and nobody really knows how to fight an object 263 you can definitely get up close and face hug because it, I mean if you find yourself in this position get close isn't a bad idea because it removes their ability to hit your lower frontal plate which is your only real frontal weak spot Object 268. Okay, let's see. That one just completely missed. And he bounces off me as well. And so does. I think that was the ISA. Ooh, E100. Now, watch this. We didn't even scratch them. Now, I take the hit there. I think he's using high explosives. Enemy is hit. 
the amount of bounces I've sustained here. E100's coming round and he's going to get a big ass hit on me. I'm trying to boom, look at that. That was a lot of damage. That's how you take care of object 263s. You derp them with high explosives. You wreck their modules. You kill their crew. Because it's an open topped vehicle. And another bounce, don't know what that was. Might be an E100. Probably the AMX 50B. This thing's just so incredibly tough. This E100 is going to be a problem. I only have 80 health left. And I really don't want to get derp with a... with a high explosive shell from this guy. If he has any sense, and he appears to have some sense, he's going to have HE waiting for me to come around this corner. But hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And there you go. Almost certainly using high explosive. And that is how you deal with Object 263s from the front or at least until somebody comes up with a better idea, because they really don't seem to have any front weak spots, and that armour is 250mm thick, and it's sloped back at a minimum of a 60 degree angle. The only real front or weak spot they've got is that lower glacis, uh, but it's very, very small. Well sloped, hard to hit. some big damage. Yeah. Aggregate here is in serious trouble. He's the only one left. And he just bounced off the E100 and he's doomed. So there you go. Um, that was an okay game. Our team was, wasn't that good. Uh, but it certainly demonstrated just how amazingly tough this thing is to kill from the front. Uh, well, I mean, we took bounce after bounce after bounce. We got up close and personal with an IS-4, and it was only an E-100 spamming us with uh, high explosive shells that did any appreciable damage to us. Uh, and that seems to be the way ahead when you're fighting Object 263s. Keep some high explosives loaded. Open top vehicle. It really, really doesn't like being hit with high explosive spam. Um, if you can get around the sides and the rear of the thing, I mean the sides are made out of ammo racks and they're only 100mm thick, so that's what you do. But from the front, yeah, um, high explosives appear to be the way ahead. So there's the new Himmelsdorf loading screen. And we're going to wrap things up with a street fight on Himmelsdorf. Very much a tier 10 game. Um, is there any artillery? No, no artillery. That's one thing I do find when... Uh, I'm playing these late night, early morning games, is that a lot of them have a nasty tendency to turn into arty parties. Don't know why. So both sides have... Oh no, they've got a tier 9 on the other side. A T-54. Uh, and we've both got a T-50-2, who's wondering what the hell they ever did to deserve ending up in this game. Now the Object 263 loves Himmelsdorf for a number of reasons. First of all, it is entirely possible to reach 60 kilometers an hour going down this hill. And you have to take your foot off the gas when you come around that corner, otherwise you just go flying at the building on the other side. So here we go, Himmelsdorf Street Fight. Now I was fully expecting to run in all of their tank destroyers down this road. That could have been an interesting fight, because, you know, 250mm of frontal sloped armour. Heh, <laughs> good luck. And that T50-2 must have been thinking, oh my god, what did I do to deserve this? Okay, next, what we got? I'm expecting targets around there to the left, but then I 
by the T110E4 of the Bat Chat over on the right, so let's go give chase. And this thing absolutely is fast enough to do that. Himmelsdorf sure is pretty. Okay, so we've got a Bat Chat fighting it out with their Bat Chat. And both these guys are about to run dry on ammo and trying to disengage. Well, we're not going to let him get away with that, are we, boys and girls? No, Uncle Jingles, we're not. That's right, we're going to kill him. Oh, hi. Oh, bye. Next, T110E4 is looking juicy. T110E4 has had an armor nerf, I believe. I think his upper hull, or turret, is only 150 millimeters thick now. God knows why, out of all the tier 10 tank destroyers, they picked that thing to nerf, but that's what's happened. So he's, he's fixating on that back jack. Um, lovely one right in the back of his turret. And can we bounce? In fact, I don't think he's even firing at us. No, there we go. He bounced. Where did that one hit? There you go. Those things, those two hatches, that's what he's aiming for. They really should be weak spots on this thing. I can definitely foresee... Oh, here we go. Check this out. I didn't even know you could get in here. Damn it. Killed our bat chat. I will avenge you, except I won't. Because he's got more than enough problems. Okay. Couldn't do anything in there. Um, and yeah, yeah, this thing. Uh, I... I honestly can't see this thing getting away without some sort of nerf. Because the speed is ridiculous. The manoeuvrability is ridiculous. The gun is very, very good. It's the best DPM in the game. 3,300 DPM on this gun. And the frontal armor, I mean, look at the thickness of that. It's, it's just absurdly good. And that lower glacis, which is not the biggest target in the world, is the only real frontal weak spot. Um, yeah, the sides are 100 millimeters thick, and they're made out of ammo racks. Fair enough. But that's not much consolation. One of the things pointing at you. Um, and saying, well, you know, you can just spam him with high explosives, which is unbelievable. Non-damaging penetrating it. Yeah. Anyway. So, there we go. Uh, victory. Hooray. Yeah. Um, I think I only actually... T no, I took two hits. There's a, there was a little ping off a T-50-2, which was never going to do any damage. And then a T-110E4, he aimed for the old hatches in the front, which you'd expect would be weak spots, but they just aren't. Um, and the only place you can reliably penetrate this thing from the front is that lower glacis. But, you know, it slopes and it isn't very big. And it's not difficult to cover it up, which means that this thing is practically unkillable from the front unless you're going to spam him with AG. And that that's a bit lame, really, isn't it? They've put a machine in the game that can only be damaged from the front if you, if you switch to high explosives. That's that's a bit crap, really. Uh, come on, Wargaming, you've got to do better than that. Uh, so, and it's all well and good, as I said, you know, saying, yeah, just shoot from the sides and rear. Well, you've got to get around the sides and rear, and <laughs> that ain't easy to do because, well, you saw, you saw me dogfighting with that T-62A on Malinovka. Right, he wasn't a very good T-62A driver, but that's not the point. I'm a tank destroyer. He's a very fast tier 10 medium tank. I shouldn't have stood a chance. Um, I, I can't see this thing getting away without some sort of nerf. And it doesn't need much. All it needs is to have those two little hatches there on the upper glacis, either side of the gun mantle. Just put make them into weak spots. That's probably all this thing really needs. Uh, and there you go, problem solved. Accurate guns can put holes through the, the, the two hatches. There's your weak spots from the front. Uh, guns that aren't so accurate can still spam them with high explosives. Job done. Um, I mean, it's immense fun to drive, but it's it's too much fun. That's the problem. It's just too powerful. Um, I would be very surprised if this thing makes it onto the live servers in its current form 
without some kind of nerf. And like I said, it doesn't take much. Just give it a couple of small weak spots on the front. That's all it needs. Uh, and I think this will be a very, very good, well-balanced machine. At the moment, it's just far too overpowered. So there you go. That was the Object 263, the new Tier 10 Russian tank destroyer. It's a great machine. It's a bit too great. Uh, and, well, as I said, very surprised if this thing makes it on live without some form of nerf. Uh, so I hope you joined the review anyway. Um, you know, the new rendering system, the new physics, and the new machines. Uh, take care on the battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.